AMD tries to fix their weird, confusing nonsense. This is the most popular graphics card and GPU upload heaps. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet this Wednesday, April 4th, 5th. It's the 5th. 2023. Let's start today talking about some confusing things that AMD happened to roll out with the Ryzen 7000 series mobile processors. The laptop ones didn't make a whole lot of sense because you could get Zen 2, Zen 3, or Zen 4, and it would all be called Ryzen 7000. So in order to fix this, so you know you're getting the fastest of the fastest, they're changing the badges, not the names, just the badges. So you look at the name, you don't know what it means. Well, you have to have the physical product in hand to understand what's going on. The orange ones, as you can see on the left here, are for the fast boys. It's gonna be anything with Zen 4, the latest things. The regular ones that you're used to are gonna be for the slow boys, or as AMD says, ideal for multitasking, streaming, and browsing, which I don't, okay. If you wanna know exactly how AMD plans to name their laptops moving forward, you can see this is how they break it down. Seven, eight, nine, depend on the actual year it comes out. Then the second number is based on what classification Ryzen 3, 5, 7, 9, or Athlon. Then the architecture is that third number. So the, the if it has a four in it, that means it's Zen 4. If it has a five, it's Zen 5. If it And then at the end, it's zero or five to indicate if it's lower or higher. And then you have the TDP number, the letter at the end. And it's you figure it out. You just need a decipher complex in order for that to happen. And you could probably ask chat GPT, just like it could break windows activation keys. It could break the model numbers on any of the laptops that are out there. Orange badges. That's what you need to look out for. And while you're looking out for that, today's video is sponsored by Ugreen and their USB-C nine in one docking station. This allows for incredible expansion, no matter what device you're using, whether it's on Mac or windows, you can have a ton of different inputs and outputs. It allows you to support dual monitors up to 4k at 60 Hertz to make sure that your computer connected to it has all of the accessibility it needs. So through this single USB-C docking station, you get two HDMI ports, two display ports, one power delivery 3.0 100 watt port, two USB-A 3.2 Gen 2 ports capable of up to 10 gigabits per second, and a Type-C 3.2 Gen 2 for 10 gigs a second, and a gigabit ethernet port. Those 10 gig USB ports allow for high speed transmission, allowing you to transfer 20 gigabyte files in 16 seconds. And with the PD 3.0 port, you have 100 watt charging connected to your laptop, which is fast enough to charge basically every USB-C laptop that's on the market, including any of the MacBooks that are out there. And it supports, again, both Mac OS as well as Windows. And you can configure it the way that you want to, because again, it's a nine in one USB-C dock that allows you to have tremendous amount of options. So you can check it out at the link in the video description. And you can use the code 05UGREEN20 plus the coupon that's on the product page to get 25% off. Again, check out the Ugreen USB-C 9-in-1 docking station at the link in the video description. Big thanks again to Ugreen for sponsoring today's video. But just like you want to dock things 9-in-1 ways, AMD wants you to dock their CPU 9-in-1 ways. Oh man, I'm so sorry for that. But what I'm trying to say is that the 7800X3D, at least according to MSI, needs a little oomphing to get it to its fastest performance ever with MSI getting their slide leaked showing that if you add things such as faster memory, which we already knew this, but then enhanced boost mode three, high efficiency mode, which are precision boost overdrive profiles that MSI's created for precision boost overdrive. When you enable all of those, you can get between nine and 12% faster performance on the actual 78. 800X3D chip. And the chart that they put out, is actually kind of helpful because it breaks down how much each one contributes to the increments. Mostly, it's not every game that's gonna see performance increase. Like in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, you only see a one FPS increase. F1 doesn't even see any increase whatsoever, but Shadow of the Tomb Raider, you go from 287 FPS all the way up to 301 with them showing that if you just add in the Expo RAM going up to DDR5 6000, you're adding 2% performance. You add in high efficiency mode, that gets you an extra 1%. And then if you add in enhanced boost mode, that gets you another further 1% on average being 4% higher, but in some games it can be nine to 12%. So it does look like it might be worth enabling this if you actually have an MSI motherboard with the upcoming launch of the 7800X 3D, which is supposed to take place tomorrow, but you might need to do a little bit for it. However, you can potentially look at it over on Best Buy Canada if you want to, because it's being listed there. It's 660 Canadian dollars. It's available for back order 
at least of the time of filming. It's probably not going to stay up for very long because AMD likely doesn't like that. But 660 Canadian dollars is 490 US dollars. So that means that this is marked up by about 50 bucks. It's not it's not the worst import fee I've ever seen before. And what also has good financial money dollars is the fact that NZXT is trying to take on Elgato with streaming apparatus or a microphone and boom arm with them coming out with the capsule mini and the boom arm mini, which will allow you to have a microphone near your face. 60 bucks for the boom arm mini. You combine these two, you got a powerful small setup for capturing your voice, just like I do here. And we're gonna capture Reese's voice for UFD deals. You got any better deals than the minis? Hey, welcome back to UFD deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. It's Wednesday, we're doing Wednesday things like deals. Featuring the white edition of Up Here's CPU Air Cooler, which may or may not have featured in a recent UFD video. You can currently pick one up for only $25.68, which is 30% off. But then if you wanna go complete opposite aesthetic wise, then the MSI Meg Z590 Unify is available. This Intel LGA 1200 socket motherboard is going for only $109.99, which is $160 off. I don't know, be bold, combine the two, make something cool. You got this, I believe in you. But those are the deals, you can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm handing you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news, cheers. Thanks Reese. just like I slipped to number two position for the most loved person on UFD Tech, with number one being Reese. it looks like Ford is slipping their position, going from two down to three, when it comes to the most EVs produced here in the United States. GM taking the number two spot, the Mach-E slipping sales by 20% almost due to the fact that they couldn't produce enough as well as the fact that a lot of people were not necessarily looking to buy them when all of the rebates and everything is changing up with how the EVs are getting real complicated here in the US. But GM also surging in sales with the Chevy Bolt EV and EUV increasing to roughly 20,000 units alone. The Cadillac Lyric also sold about a thousand and then they sold two. Hummer trucks. Two, Kyler. I want one. You can't, do you have a quarter of a million dollars? I could. You could? If I wanted to. If you wanted to? Yeah. Do you want to? No, it's not right this That two is worth half a million dollars because they sell for a very large amount of money, but it does look like GM is doing okay. However, if you compare it to Tesla's numbers who just came out with their Q1 numbers, it was roughly almost half a million total cars sold. They don't break it down via region. However, analysts that track this seem to think that Tesla sold about 161,000 here in the US. So number two is a very far cry off with GM barely selling more than 20,000 vehicles. And this is the number two time we're talking about Google Drive in the past two episodes of Hot News. Great segue, Brett. I'm full of the best ones today. Google Drive, at least for a little bit, had an implementation where you couldn't upload more than 5 million files despite how much storage you actually had. So there were several people who indicated that they had two terabytes total uploaded out of a five terabyte capacity, but they were at 7 million files. So Google Drive said you can't upload no more. There was a lot of uproar around it and it turns out that they're gonna be rolling back that decision with Google Drive saying, while well, this impacted only a small number of people, we are rolling back this change as we explore alternate approaches to ensure great experience for all. Additionally saying, if we need to make changes Changes, we will communicate them to users in advance, which I think was probably the nuts and bolts of this problem right here. If they had indicated in their terms of service ahead of time, gave people enough time to actually change their structure before they implemented this, they could have found an alternate way to deal with the fact that they need that many files, which I don't know what these people are doing where you have 7 million files and it's only taking up two terabytes. Like, I don't know what those documents are, but yeah, communicating is, the, is probably the crux of the matter here. Google. Thank you for fixing that. And it looks like NVIDIA has been fixing the numbers when it comes to Steam's hardware survey because they have seen some great surgeons on Steam hardware survey with the 3060 now being the most popular GPU on Steam with it having 10.6% of the market share of total GPUs on Steam, which is an increase from 4.36% to 10.67. That is over double what it was from February into March. Also seeing huge surging is the 2060 going from 4.63 up to 8%. The 1060 also gained market share going from 5.28 to 7.85. And the 3070 went from 2.91 to 5.43. 3060 Ti went from 2.92 to 5.06. The 1650 declined, the 1050 Ti declined, the 3060 laptop declined, but it does seem to at least beg the question of did like a ton of systems in like China come online or like one giant 
Gamer Cafe started pushing out all of their numbers to the Steam Hardware Survey because those are massive changes in a single month where I don't think, like, yes, GPUs have come down in price, but not to the point where it would shift the dynamics this much in a single month. We probably would have seen a more steady increase from January through March as opposed to over doubling in a single month. Let me know if this makes sense to you. Have you had a ton of friends pick up a 3060? Are they solely responsible for the 10.6% market share, you and your buddies. Let me know down below in the comments. But good news, if you're gonna use those GPUs to get faster gaming performance, it looks like that's gonna be coming in DirectX 12. This is actually a pretty remarkable enhancement that's gonna be made in DX12. It's something that kind of went under the radar because they published it around April Fools. Additionally, there's not a whole lot of implementation in video games just yet, but what DX12 is going to do with something called GPU upload heaps is it's going to allow the process on your gaming PC to use the VRAM that's on your graphics card. So you have to have resizable bar in order to make this happen, which is a feature of the latest DX12 games as well. But this would allow you to have more memory pool to pull from when it comes to sharing your GPU resources with the rest of the system. It could potentially mean that you need less actual RAM in your PC, which could allow you to actually save a little bit of money there. But DirectX saying with the VRAM being managed by Windows, D3D now exposes the heat memory access directly to the CPU. This allows both the CPU and GPU to directly access the memory simultaneously, removing the need to copy data from the CPU to the GPU, increasing performance in certain scenarios. So it's not gonna be in all instances, but it does look like DirectX 12 is becoming an incredible API for actually playing video games. We're looking at direct storage coming out for faster loading times. Now we have GPU upload heaps, which is going to allow for better system sharing and resources. And this is in fact something AMD was looking forward to about like a decade ago with this slide showing that they had the idea of CPUs being able to share their resources with GPUs so that you don't have to go to a page file. You could access the memory directly on the GPU, allowing for better share of resources, which in case you're thinking, does this sound familiar to me? It does, because this is typically roughly how it works when it comes to consoles. It's not a one for one, but it's the general idea. It's why when you see the system specs on a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series, X, you only see one specific amount of RAM, whether it's 12, 16 gigabytes that's being shared between the CPU and the GPU. It allows for a lot more cohesion in how games can be developed for them because you're not necessarily limited to the amount of RAM that somebody has attached to their CPU. This opens up the possibilities. If you have an RTX 3060 with 12 gigabytes of VRAM and you only have eight gigabytes of DDR4 in your system, this might actually help you play games more effectively in specific instances like Spider-Man, which like needs a ton of RAM to actually run properly. I'm personally very excited to see this get implemented in games moving forward. I'm looking forward to this future. Let me know if you like the upload heaps as well. I feel like we have to call it GPU upload heaps. We can't come up with like a different name for it, like smart access memory, like AMD did with resizable bar. We call it upload heaps. We don't allow manufacturers to take that name away from us. Kyler, can I get an upload heaps? Upload heaps. That's what I'm talking about. See you tomorrow for hot news, my friends.